do a raw activation, or is he looking for something? Fujimura, no Pudo on left, so he's got oh a... My oh god. my god, just enough Magic one pixel. HP left here for Pudo! It's gonna be a miracle for Pudo to take this Oh hand. my god, dash jump! <laughs> oh, S-Fat. So S-Fat loves FD. Oh, S-Smash, smart. Okay. Down Ooh. throw! Oh, nice nice timing there from Rep. Two Voking. Dude, Rip his so reaction is nice. Holy shit! That's tough. Voki's going to summit! What's up, everybody? Welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Brody Moore, and this is Drew Face. And of course, today is all about FGC. Drew, we got a loaded schedule, so what we got? Look, we got a crazy party of a Smash event called the Mango. And then we had definitely got some crazy Street Fighter action with the Taipei Major. Hey, man. Well, why don't we just get straight into the Mango? Before we call up the legendary Smash commentator, Tove, let's check out the highlights from this very unique tournament. I mean, still 100% doable for Mads. Oh, that might be it. That's it. Hold it. Oh! Oh, that was smart. Oh, oh my god. My oh, my god. goodness. This is so even right now, dude. Oh, that Ooh, could be it. This is so... Kevin, what? Ooh, what? what? <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, Alex. Jesus. Look at this. Oh, the dash dance. No. Is that going to be it, though? Yo! Yeah. Yo! Oh. Yo! Damn it. Is going home. Wrestler. Oh, nice. He's still got a jump, though. But nice. I love wow. that. That was that's, that's how you're supposed to do it. That was great. Oh, S-Fat. So S-Fat loves FD. Oh, S-Smash. Smart. Okay. Down Ooh. throw. Oh, nice nice timing there from that two Voking. Dude, his so reaction good. is nice. Holy sh That's tough. Voki's going to summit. <laughs> wow. Kind of came down with the back. Oh my god, it oh, missed. Oh, he's, dude, this guy is crazy. Oh, what? Pokey <laughs> is so good at spacing right outside, like the get up cool. attack and whatever, yeah. like, options. Falcon oh. has. He gets the wave land off into the oh. air. Yo, what Moki. a shield poke. Moki's, hey, Moki's playing. Moki's good. Huh? Way go. How much you got made right now, dude? Oh. 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 Hey. It doesn't matter. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna you had uh, after you won. Oh, yo. Yo, Oh. Oh. With Moki at four oh. stocks to oh. three stocks. Okay. Can he make this comeback? Leffen, how do you feel going into this last stock you know, right now? He's down two stocks now. That's really bad. What is it? Yeah. Right. Oh. Sakurai. Oh. oh. Yo. That was. Sick. That was super dope. Any any y'all could hop up there. Oh! oh. 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 Yo, Johnny? 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 Oh! Oh my Johnny! Oh. Dude, Johnny. I used to hate up. Johnny smash. confirmed. Oh! Yo, that was. Reddit, Reddit, that Reddit. Was front page. Day. Right now. Oh, Moki's gonna though. be the stock of the tournament. Stock, oh. stock of the wow. tournament. Moki's oh, gonna though. take it. Look at that first hit neutral air. Oh. Both of these guys really want to win. Oh! Oh! John. Damn. And Johnny. Johnny makes it into SCJ Summit. And Johnny makes has it into made Summit. summit. <laughs> and S2J takes home the mango. And more importantly, Moki is in the final qualifier going to smash Summit 8. Now, to help us break down this event, we have Tof on the line. What's up, man? It's been a while. Hey, what's up, man? It has been a while. It's good to see you again. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we get to chat now. So why don't we talk about this event just overall before we dive into, like, the matches? Because it's a very unique feel uh, for the Mango. It's like half party, half super serious melee. Like, that's type just, of event, man. Yeah, that sounds like your <laughs> kind of event, right? Event, Can you just talk to us about the unique dynamic of this event? Yeah, that's exactly, actually, that's exactly the point I was, uh, I was kind of making with people when I was talking about mm -hmm. how I felt about the Mango, which is very interesting because... As a summit qualifier, you know, half the people that are competitors there that are, you know, real serious threats are already qualified for, you know, like Smash Summit the following weekend, which is obviously, you know, a super prestigious event. So they're kind of just there to party. They're there to take it easy and just kind of drink and hang out. And then the other half are not qualified yet. So they really want to get in. So you've got half the people who are like, you know, going secondaries in bracket potentially dropping out to, you know, they missed their pool because they, they partied too hard or whatever. And then you've got half the people who are, you know, like, 
you know, going to bed super early, you know, waking up and grinding and like getting getting warm and all that mm -hmm. and being really, really serious about it because they really want that spot, um, which is a really interesting dynamic. Most of the time, you know, everyone has at the event will have about the same level of sort of seriousness about it. Yeah. But at, uh, at the Mango, there's kind of two very conflicting dynamics going on, which makes it really interesting and unpredictable. Yeah. I want to even talk to this set because I know there's like your kind of style here. Dude, all right, we got a little bit of a glimpse of like Moki at this show. Yeah. And this, the, he's a lone Canadian here, and he came up huge again. He got second. Whoa, what makes Moki so special, man? Yeah, Moki, uh, I mean, he's been on a tear lately for sure. Like, again, on my level a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. he, um, he really uh, put on like a, a strong performance. I mean, like, he got top eight, right? And like, Wizzy. Uh, got fourth qualifying at that event beating Hungrybox, but like Moki was right there if you remember he took Hbox to game five Yeah, so I think he went into The mango like knowing he could do it, but still that it would be a challenge mm -hmm. And I think the thing about Moki is like at least when I watch him play I mean when I talk to him Because we actually did have him on the reads last weekend in NorCal. So he actually was you know uh, Like I actually got got it got to hang out with him kind of pick his brain mm -hmm. all weekend, but when I talk to him, he's a really humble guy, but he like doesn't play like that at all. Like when he plays, I feel like he's always playing like he's the best player on the screen, whether that's true or not. He always mm -hmm. plays like he's like just you know like I'm better than this guy. I'm gonna like I'm gonna style on him. No, no, I feel I feel like you you have to do that. Like once you're in there, like everything can change right now. I, I'm just questioning about this event. You know, is we have to take it with I guess a bit of grain of salt because um, it wasn't you know the highest level. Um, but I'm just wondering if this was. Uh, the proper practice for him because uh, we don't get to see him at too many events uh, but he was he's still playing at this top level even when he's going into like you know this fun event do, uh, do you think he's going to be able to stay in form uh going forward or if do you think that's going to fall off i mean i think so right like i mean regardless of like okay so obviously like the gods or whatever like you know mango hunger box players like that aren't, mm. aren't entering but um like you know who did moki beat but like he beat s fat like top you know, who's a top 10 player, like, or 11th or whatever. Swedish Delight, who is, you know, similarly, like, around the top 15 level, really, really strong player. Um, and there were other people who were entering, like, you know, like, uh, like Spud, who's also beaten players around that level. You know, S2J, he took to game five. Add get on my level two, he beat Pluck, who's literally, you know, uh, one of the contenders we see to take makers. So I think that, um, uh, he's definitely like Moki's definitely shown consistency over the past couple of weeks. I, I don't think I, there's no question in my mind that he could go, uh, you know, toe to toe with practically anyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, of course, there's two Canadians going to uh, the summit, but mm -hmm. we got Moki and none. But on the topic of Spud, he's from New Zealand. How do you, how yeah, strong do you think? The, yeah, it's crazy, right? How strong do you think the international melee scene is right now? Yes. Well, Spud in particular, I mean, international is one thing. It's, it's, uh, because I know, like, like Spud is probably a standout player from his region. Mm -hmm. I'd say like overall in terms of like depth, you know, probably his region isn't, you know, at quite his level versus a place like SoCal where you've got like 20, 25 players who are all like pretty insane, for example. But um, that being said, yeah, there's definitely like, like these like standout players that are coming from all sorts of different places. I think it's really, really cool. Definitely the most international talent of any summit so far. Uh, to Canadian, you got Amsa from Japan, you got Spud, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think it's really exciting. And for Spud in particular, um, yeah, I think he's insane too, man. And I think what's cool about players like him are that he's come to the U.S. Obviously, he can't come to the big U.S. tournaments very often, right? He can only travel so often, uh, given how far of a flight it is. But every time he's come, He's shown up and it's one thing to be really good but it's another thing to be a, a really good player and also know that you know this is i'm you know you go to the u.s right you go to a big tournament it's like okay this is my one chance to prove myself for maybe the next year or so before i can travel again and he's actually got the you know the um what's the word i'm looking for motivation Essentially, he's not really performing yeah no not even that just just he's not getting nervous you know he's not letting it get to him like yo i can't i can't go to a Often. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's that's really impressive to be able to perform at the at the uh, standard you hold yourself to, even when it's like high pressure because you might not get another opportunity like that. Okay. That often. 
So I want, I, want, I want to talk about Falcons right now. Because, like, obviously this was, like, uh, not a super, super, like, stacked tournament or anything, but we see SCJ taking it. Um, is this, like, kind of the, 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 a new era of Falcons right now? Is there some sort of meta shift we're looking at? Or do you think this is going to be kind of short-lived, you know, like we saw back in the day with Amazon and Yoshi? Yeah. Uh, no, I definitely think it's a meta shift. Okay. Um, I don't think Falcons like top tier or whatever, but you're already seeing people like when I say top tier, I mean like top three, but you're already seeing people like update their tier list, putting Falcon and like, you know, I've seen him as high as like fifth. Um, and I think Falcon is the kind of character where he definitely people have always kind of known like, OK, I mean, he's really good. He's just really hard to play. Right. Obviously, he has some big weaknesses like. If you get him off stage, he's really easy to gimp. You know, you have to play really well with him if you're not hitting your uh, tech chases. If your reactions aren't on point, you know, you're you're uh, you're not going to be able to punish. But um, I think S2J, Wizrobe, and Nun are all the best they've ever been right now. They're all borderline, like they're probably around top ten, top fifteen area. Um, with Wizzy and S2J in particular in top ten, I would say. Um, and so, yeah, no, I don't think it's like a uh, flash in the pan. I think Falcon literally is just, people are realizing that he's just a really, really scary character. Falcon made and this rejoice. Is the first uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And this is the first summit where all three of them, all three of them qualify for summit, right? That's, 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 there's the first summit with two Canadians and the first summit with three of the top, all three of the top Falcons, which is really exciting. That's true. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, look. I'm a commentator, you're a commentator. I noticed that during this event, the energy was a lot more loose and energetic more than, mm -hmm. other, than most other events. Yeah. Well, what was it to commentate under those conditions, especially with Mango, you know, <laughs> just hopping on the mic, giving you free, uh, free uh, alcoholic beverages and all that? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I did, um, yeah, especially for like, like me, the first half of the top eight was me, Armada, and Alex. I thought it was actually a really dope vibe because yeah. um, it worked out really well. First of all, we don't do tricasts that often. But we had Armada, and he was, um, you know, he's kind of, you know, super knowledgeable, obviously, like really, really deep, um, like knowledge about things that, that, you know, he was, he was, he basically pioneered both of his characters. And then you had Alex, who's like super chill guy, um, but also, you know, we got a good, good set of matches for Alex. Alex is a Fox player, and we got mostly like, you know, like fast paced Fox matches. And then I was kind of the bridge between the two. I feel like, and I thought our energy was really, really dope. So for me, um, like, I thought it was pretty perfect. I had, a, I had a really good time with it. Um, and it was cool because it was like, we're super, you know, we're super loose about it, but this is hype because, like, these guys really want to get in the summit. So, like, you know, we're side betting, you know, we're having a good time. Like, you know, I got $20 on this guy, blah, 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 $100 on this guy. I thought it was kind of dope. Now, I, I know you're gearing up right now for Summit, so I just want to get some thoughts looking forward. <clears throat> Are we going to see some more crazy upsets? I mean, it feels like the, that old era of, of Melee is over, and any kind of predictions for that Grand Finals? Yeah. Um, geez, that is a good yeah, question. It's tough. <laughs> any predictions? For, I would really have to look at the seating, mm. who's playing the pools. <sighs> To like really give an honest answer, like to really give like, mm -hmm. okay, this is what I think is gonna happen. This is who I think is gonna upset who. Not knowing who's gonna play who, because I I don't I haven't even seen the pools. Fair. Um, jeez. It's hard now. Yeah. Like the scene's crazy I, now. It's a little more feeling, balanced. I'm actually feeling like I mean, okay, I'm gonna say like Mango H box. All right. I feel like Mango. I feel like Mango's play been playing really well overall. I feel like H box is still super scary. If he doesn't get taken out by Wizzy. He's shown that he can be just about anybody, um, and I think, I think we're, I think it's about time for another Mango H box finals. Hey, you know what? Long. As as a puff main, I'm down for uh, Hunger Box figuring it out and getting to the. Yeah, you don't look at me like that. Do not look at me like that. Anyway, stuff. It was a blast. We are out of time. Uh, thanks for joining us and have fun at Summit, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's time to head over to the ta uh, Taipei Major for some Street Fighter Five action. Before we hit up James Chen, let's get caught up with some highlights. Oh, but he was airborne. Yeah, another, another one. one. Doesn't care. Wow, what is he crushing? Probably back dash, right? He's airborne, probably back dash. Oh, oh he goes through a chase. Another Again. one. No fear. He knows, dude. He knows. He doesn't care about that damn mirror. Here we go. Last time he back dash, come in, grab. 
Aegis available for you, save though. Oh. Ooh. Give me another one, baby. Psychic pressure, save. Pot oh, yes. no! That's not save! Hey! You say popping off a little bit. I just dumped this EDC. Every kid's brush her teeth and wind up like that. Oh, double, double KO. KO! We'll take it! What's the mix up? Oh, oh interesting. Back on. off. One clean hit does the end. But will he even get it? Oh, oh that's my gosh, gonna be end. it! Yo Yo Tai recognized he had had the. Didn't have the life lead, and so he just let him hang himself right there. And that's gonna be it. Yo Yo Tai, the hometown hero here against. What are you doing? Yeah. Throw. Into the loops, here we go. Fruity loops. Yeah, I like that. Take a step back, don't let her out. She's trying to jump out there. That is close to oh, taking with a micro oh. shimmy. All right, ooh, damage strike, interesting choice there. Oh, oh activation. Man. Beautiful confirm. Okay, does a side switch here. One more low medium attack into the confirm. Yeah, into it. the. Yes. Didn't even need the CA as he burned two meters. Good throw break from Bonchan. Still alive in the corner though. Ooh. This is going to be very difficult to weather the storm as she nears stun. One more One. clean hit to do it. Back oh. throw. That would have been stun Good. or death depending yeah. either way. So very nice for Fujimura yeah. to move into the grand finals. Who just got a full stick of butter on? And that's what gonna be is it. That? Into the jump rope. Why not? <laughs> There you go, Fudo. Oh, all right. Representing Fudo. that beast squad. That's going to be a hit. Follow up? No. The throw. Break. He, he was Overhead. A... Is it coming? It's down to That's the... going to be and it. Double horn. Fudo. Double horn. With the young man reactions there. How will Fudo get out of the corner? Very nice. Oh, wait. Oh, activation. No, not but... quite good enough. That's gonna be full damage right into the stun. No, no not no quite. Stun. Oh my Super. God. I think he blocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fudo, blocked. the ever patient player there, just blocks it out. Recognizes the situation. Fudo's desperate. Got one more in his pocket here, and that's gonna be it again. That's, that's three so for three. That's actually ridiculous. You need to confirm off of this. Of course, Fuji Fujimura. Mura. We expect him to do the most optimal of combos. Fujimura, no clue right left. So he's got. Oh my, oh my God! Just a enough one pixel. HP left here for Fudo. It's gonna be a miracle for Fudo to take this. Oh hand. my god, dash up! <laughs> Give it up for Fujimura here with a commanding victory. And Fujimura is the champion of the Taipei Major. To help us recap the event, let's welcome in the one and only it's James Chen. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How's everybody going over there? Rock and rolling. I'm, we got Drew and me, we're ready to talk some FGC. It's Absolutely. it's nothing but good. Absolutely. I'm hyped. Yeah. I'm hyped. All right, why don't you get us into it? Talking about Fujimura, man. You know what? I'm so disappointed at Fujimura, but <laughs> Fujimura definitely got the job done. He got, he got the job done over Fudo and my homie Bonchan. How did Fujimura take his Ibuki to the next level to win this event? Because he was not going to cook anybody. I mean, look, Fujimura has been a, a top player in the CPT for so long already now. It's been like two years in a row that he's been doing so well. And, you know, he's gotten himself, I think, properly ensconced into the top five right now under the CPT board here. And, you know, a lot of people talk about how strong Ibuki is. Everyone's been talking about this character as being one of the best uh, currently, uh, along with probably Rashid, Karen, you know, a few of the other characters. But... Fujimura, as an Ibuki player, I feel like just uses Ibuki to the most effective level out of any of the Ibuki players. Even someone like Sien, you know, who's super good at Ibuki, who also got top eight at the event, mm. you know, often refers to Fujimura as the best Ibuki out there. So, you know, uh, again, a player who already has so many points in the CPT, just adding more to it right now. The rich get richer, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the way the world goes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so well, talk to me then about, about Bonchan, because like, it, it feels like it, it's, it's so close. Like fourth at SEA, <laughs> third here. Like, uh, what, what, does he, what does he need to get that, finally get that, that elusive major win? Man, uh, it's it's a tough one because we love watching Bon Chan play uh, Bon Chan play Sagat, and he is, has the reputation for being the king, using the king in Street Fighter 4 and here in Street Fighter 5. You know, he's been trying to uh, get that same kind of success with the character. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Sagat is as strong. He's also got a Karen as well, so you know he has the. Uh, characters to be able to win a major like that. But the thing is, is like, I don't want to say that I feel like he needs to stick more to Karen than than, than Sagat because we all love watching his Sagat. Yeah, yeah. Like, we don't want to see him not use Sagat. So, 
uh, if to, to get the win, maybe he might have to stick with Karen a little bit more. But even in some situations when he went up against Fudo, you know, Karen versus Birdie is not a great matchup. And so I understand why, you know, he would go with Sagat instead. But, man, you know, like... I just want to, I want, almost want to just be like, you know what, to win, keep using Sagat, because I just want to keep using it, even if it's not necessarily the best thing for him. Yeah, Drew. We just want to, we just want to see him use the king. You feel, you feel that too, man? Like, what are, you, what are you feeling on this? What's your, what's your take? Look, look, James, you and I are both OGs. We've loved Super Turbo, and Sagat was an overly powerful character in, <laughs> in Super Turbo. And we kind of yes. want to see, like, we kind of want to see Bonchan kind of tune into that, right? With this mm-hmm. Sagat, like, in, in this meta. Because you and I, I bet you you kind of miss, like, that old school type of zoning in Street Fighter yeah. Five. Yeah, the, the whole projectile zoning game is just, it's, so, it's almost kind of like a lost art. And, you know, for Sagat, it works in certain matchups in Street Fighter V, but there are certain matchups, you know, where it just doesn't work nearly as well when you have characters like like uh, Bison or Nash or something that could just, you know, take the fireballs and, you know, it, it makes it a little bit tough to be the zoning kind of character with that. Yeah. But, you know, Sagat is still considered kind of, you know, mid-tier, mid-high tier, so... He is the underdog, so when people get to see Bonchan doing so well with the character, it's it's just thrill. It's the underdog thing, you know. People want to see him win. Do you think it'd be too much if if he tried to switch away, like just because the you know the gameplay has kind of shifted away from that that style? Do you think it'd be too much to try to get your head in that mindset, and that's why you know uh, we see that like Bonchan not being able to you know do anything different to to get that. You know, I mean, I feel like he, he for the longest of time, and he was a Nash player, and now he's a Karen player. His Karen is obviously very, very strong. He did well with Karen before, so I don't think it's too much of a uh, an ask of him to, to try to change the style. I just think it's just he kind of is aware of the fact that people would love to see a Sagat, and I think he has a lot of fondness for the character as well. So, you know... I wouldn't even necessarily say Sagat is his main main at this point in time because I feel like he's been using Karen for so long. So he can go either way. And, and, and really, I, I wonder I wonder sometimes if it is a little bit of the, the, the viewer pressure that, that he uses Sagat because he knows people just want to see it. Every time yeah. he does it, like, the audience cheers for him. and, and like, That feels good, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's true. I mean... Uh, we got to move on from Bonchan or else I, we and I, yeah, we'll, just like, we'll just talk about him all day, right? But there are a couple of hometown favorites at this top eight at Taipei Major. You mm-hmm. tie the young and up-and-comer Mika player and Gamer B, who's kind of been a, yeah. a long, a, like, he's been around for so long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about these two guys? Because I, I definitely know, but tell the viewers. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> get, and get Brody. Me. Brody definitely needs to know. I mean, in, in particular, I think one of the most important things to talk about Gamer B here was that he used to be the TO. He was the tournament organizer of the Taiwan Major, right? And so he actually spent a lot of his time and effort trying to run this event. And uh, this year, he decided to stop. He, he, he said he really wanted to concentrate on playing again on being a competitor so he stopped being the to of this event and oil king one of the other strongest players from Mm -hmm. taiwan took over and that's why it's not the taiwan major anymore it's the taipei major because he kind of wanted to respect uh gamer b's event and you know not continue that and just kind of go off on a, a, a do a different way but that's super exciting to me because look i'm the biggest gamer b fan i love bruce to death i've been a fan of his forever and you know the fact that he decided to take the the backseat role on the major to be a competitor and then here he is and he made top eight on winner's side you know Feels showing good. that you know the decision that he went with is paying off and he's you know back into that position where he's playing so strong again i'm really happy for gamer b and and i i'm hoping he can continue the success you know not having this uh major to run and to be able to concentrate on the competition side Mm -hmm. so it is really exciting for me to see gamer b doing so well here at the at the taipei major again you know he went zero and two in top eight but to make top eight on the winner side i think is is really telling of just how strong he could be once he puts its puts his mind to it and puts all of his efforts into it. Well, that, yeah, I mean, like, Japan inevitably did come out on top, but, like, how is the the Taiwanese region just at this point, just uh, in the grand scheme of things? 
You know, they're, they're always going to be uh, an underdog kind of uh, region in comparison to mm -hmm. the rest of Asia. Japan is obviously going to be the strongest. Korea always has, has a lot of strong players. And, you know, he has always been kind of the one guy in Taiwan. However, Oil King, who I mentioned was the new TO of Taipei Major, he basically is the strongest player in Taiwan right now. And Oil King has been doing so well on the CPT tour right now. So for the most part, it's always been Gamer B and Oil King and Oil King kind of being on top. But, you know, nice to see Gamer B getting back there. And But there has been a lot of other players from Taiwan that are starting to step up. As you, as you mentioned, you know, there was two Taiwanese players in the top eight. And, uh, you know, that's always really good to see because a lot of times you'll see, you know, majors in Asia and it's just like Japan is just dominating everything over there. So to actually have two Taiwanese players make the top eight like that says a lot for the region. And I'm really hoping, you know, that that scene continues to grow and that it's more than just Gamer B and more than Oil King. But a lot of that also comes with the fact that we don't get to see a lot of the other Taiwanese players travel as yeah. much. So having the major in Taiwan to highlight the local players there is very, very important. And maybe some of these other Taiwanese players with this strong performance can get sponsored and they'll be able to start traveling as well. Now, Drew, I, I'm going to pick your brains and I'll, I'll get uh, James' thoughts after too. But uh, we see a lot of guys jumping from like anime fighters and oh, having a bit of success. It's a, it's a problem. Yeah, is it's it a problem? Because I know you play a lot of games. So it's like, a plague. Is it a plague? Yeah. Really? These <laughs> anime players, man, they're just trying to come over here and try, <laughs> trying to win the Street Fighter stuff because they know where the money's at, baby. Capcom got the dab. Capcom got the dollars. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're trying to do. A, yeah. I mean, I, I know you're probably referring in, in, in particular to Machibo. Yeah, oh, he's my uh, hero, though. Like, I love his Nakali, yeah, but, well, yeah. but he, man, he, we, he came from Guilty Gear. He was a Guilty Gear god. I know he, he played this game for the money. I know it. <laughs> I mean, he literally said that, right? So he was like, <laughs> well, I'm not getting sponsored. I'm not winning the prize money on Guilty Gear, so I'm going to play some Street Fighter. And as you mentioned, he is a Guilty Gear God, he yeah, is one of the so best Guilty Gear he's players so right now, in my opinion. If there were, if 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 the FGC, if Street Fighter V was like a stock market and you wanted to invest on a, a company that was on the rise, Machibo is it right now because he just won Battle Arena Melbourne, and uh, in the last four tournaments that he's been in, he has made top eight every single time, uh, including a third place at Combo Breaker, which had like 600 entrants or so. So right now, Machibo is, is hot stuff. I mean, he is the hot commodity right now that you want to invest in. He has been playing so well, and I've been so impressed with his transition, transition especially using Nikali, who a lot of people mm -hmm. kind of abandoned. But now every, like now, I, I feel like he is making Nikali look so fun like I, i've always thought nikali was kind of a straightforward character but the way macho <laughs> plays so good so Look, i love nikali and for the longest time in season like two and three i was trying to play it kind of not not to the effect of like metropolis style right where it's like you counter poke but he's so good at counter poking and he's so good yes. at reading your timings man that neutral jump roundhouse he does is is incredible like i, yes. I just love the way he plays but you know what, yeah. James? Before we let you go, it's been a really big week for video games overall with E3 happening. What yeah. got you hyped up like me, baby? What, you, what got you hyped up? Uh, you know, look, I'm... I grew up a Nintendo boy, okay. you know, my whole entire life, and I, I feel like Nintendo's been winning E3 for like the last five years or whatever. Uh, they revealed Banjo-Kazooie for Smash Brothers, which I thought was super awesome. The, the, the hero from Dragon Quest, and then a Breath of the Wild sequel. Like, I thought maybe it was gonna be DLC, but it's like gonna be a full-on sequel. I loved Breath of the Wild. I'm super hyped for all the Nintendo stuff. So uh, that's that's where my heart is always going to be, is with Nintendo. That's fair. I think a lot of people would probably agree with you. But unfortunately, James, we are out of time. But we always appreciate you joining us. Thank you for dropping that uh, Street Fighter knowledge. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for always having me. You know I'm always down to help you guys. So. <laughs> Bro. I love James Chen. I love him too, dog. James Chen. I saw you swooning anytime I went into his camera, you just swooning. You're like, it's oh, James Chen. He's amazing. Yeah. Anyways, Drew, uh, we ta we talked. You talked about Nintendo at the end there. Um, so we got to talk about, of course, the new characters that they launched. 
I think there's way too many sword anime sword fighters in this. Um, no, they're the not. Stuff, but I am hyped about uh, about Banjo though. Oh yeah, Banjo is definitely hyped. But the Dragon Quest hero is amazing, dude. He has his own menu for magic, and you can play as all the protagonists in the most relevant Dragon Quest in the last 30 years. How am I not hyped for that? And he has a sword, so I'm definitely hyped. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it looked like too much he like can Robin. Shoot magic, dude. Yeah, look, we he got can Robin. shoot magic. We got Robin. We don't need another sword one that can shoot magic. Who? What? Who? <laughs> You're like relevant now. <laughs> you got Dragon Quest here, bro. I, I know. The, I'm not gonna lie. The only Dragon Quest that I uh, that I actually really enjoyed personally was Dragon Quest Builders, and I know that has nothing to do with the the, the original series, really. So uh, I probably can't talk too much of that. But Banjo Kazooie looks lit. Yeah, that that feel there. All right. <laughs> no, definitely not Duck Hunt clone. All right. Enough, <laughs> enough of uh, my opinions. I, got, I need one more opinion from you. Uh, it's got to be, of course, our player of the week. Who's hitting it this week, Drew? Monkey, baby! That fox is way too fast. I don't know what you were cooking, but everybody else was definitely <laughs> slower than you. That's <laughs> he was moving in the matrix, dog. That was crazy. How are you going to argue that? Like, that's, that should be the end of the story. Am I going to make you uh, just convince me a little more? Why? Do you think he's going to be able to keep this up? you think Monkey's going to fall off? Or is this just the beginning of Monkey? This is the beginning of a new era. A new era? No, Monkey That's era. a big claim, man. Absolutely. You think, like, Absolutely. The, the future of Smash is Monkey? And Canadian. And Canadians and are taking. Canadian. The, the Americans are still really good, man. You can't discount. Absolutely, them. they're really good. But we, 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 the king of the north. All right, those are some bold claims, and I'm gonna leave you guys to decide whether he's right or not. But that is all the time we have for today's show. Big ups to Tove and James Chen for calling into the show. Tomorrow we're throwing it back to ESL One Birmingham for some Dota Two action. So make sure you're here for it. Until then, check out all our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you tomorrow.